Hey everybody, welcome back to our live summer spectacular. So we are now going to take a break here from the Homestead studio and shoot all the way down to Australia. And when Stella's done with her game, we're going to come back and see start the beginning of Jason and Liz going through their top 50 solo games of all time. There's going to be five videos spread throughout this entire process and then another top 10. So lots of good stuff, but let's take a flight down to Australia. Take it away, Stella. Welcome to the Dice Tower Summer Spectacular, featuring live plays, contests, and the Dice Tower Awards. We'd like to thank our sponsors and our special guests, and we hope that you enjoy. Hi, it's Taryn. And Stella from Maple University on the Dice Tower. In this video, we'll be showing you a playthrough for Sheepy Time in the Dice Tower Summer Spectacular, even though it's winter here. The game is designed by Neil Kimball and published by Alderac Entertainment Group. We also have a contest as there are two copies of the game up for grabs for worldwide giveaway. Two lucky winners will receive a copy of Sheepy Time each. In order to enter the contest, all you need to do is email contest at dicetower.com with the email subject Sheepy and include your first and last name in the email. This contest is open until midnight on Sunday, July the 25th, 2021 Eastern Daylight Time. This information is also available in the video description. Good luck everyone and let's play. So here we are ready to play Sheepy Time. I am playing purple. And I'm playing as blue. The game does play up to four players. We are using the two player mode here. That includes taking some cards out of deck. It includes using this. And before you ask, we actually are using our own Lazy Susan, this green bit. So we can rotate because some of these styles have got text. Um, so the game does not come with Lazy Susan. Yes. The game does come with three nightmares, however. Ding, ding, ding. So we are, we are asleep. We are trying to get most winks that we can while we're asleep. Mm -hmm. uh, in the first round, if you were to catch 40 winks, which is not <laughs> going to happen in the first round, yeah. but if you could, you would win the game. So what I'll do, I'll take you through a quick overview of the game first before we get into playing it. This is a, it's a game of combo building, it's a game of pushing your luck, uh, and it's a game about getting a good night's sleep. So we're playing as these sheep, and we're going to be doing laps of this 10 space board, gaining winks on this track every time we complete a lap and cross the fence. Because that's always the, um, that's what they always say. You count sheep jumping over a fence as a way of trying to fall asleep. So that's what we're going to be doing. We also, we can pick up some more winks from some of these uh, combo powers that either start around the board or will appear as the game goes on. Once you've crossed the fence, at the point you cross the fence, you can either sit out of the round or you can keep going. You can push your luck to try to get there again. And you move by playing cards. Yes. Yeah. But if you, if the nightmare, there are some cards in here for the nightmare. If the nightmare beats you around the board or if the nightmare scares you twice by landing on or through you twice, then you wake up and you yes, lose your winks, you're yeah. out of that round. And then we're going to add some more of these to the board and go again. Whoever gets the most winks in a given round gets to drop their pillow down this track <clears throat> further than the other player. And then all the winks reset to zero and you go to sleep the following night. And ultimately what you're trying to do is have one night where your winks get above your pillow. And the first player to do that or the player who gets the furthest past their pillow on the night they achieve it, wins the game. It's kind of like you're trying to get a lot of wicks <coughs> and also further your pillow in a little bit. Yes. So uh, <clears throat> there are three different nightmares you can play with. And we're going to play with the basic nightmare here, which is the wolf. Um, and the wolf, the powers aren't that, um, they're not that complex. The wolf's either going to move one or two spaces or scare all of the sheep on, on that space or adjacent. And if so, if the wolf moves through you or onto you, you get scared. And if you move onto the wolf, you get scared. Although you can move through. So we need to pick a first player. Let's do our usual one, mm -hmm. two, three. One, two, three. 
you would be first. <laughs> you yeah. have to do this. So I am first oh. sheep in first round. Oh, I shall take this token. And we. These don't come into effect until the end of the round. What is that next? Yep. So now we each take two cards and we check them for wolf cards. Wolf card. We have a wolf card. So the nightmare moves one space. So the night, there's us. We're all on space zero at the moment, which doesn't exist on the board. So there we go. The nightmare goes here. So it is, I believe this is stand up, but because we have overhead camera, we just yep. lay it down. But we can't do that with the sheep. Yeah. Um, when our sheep are standing up, they are uh, in scared. deep More sleep. And then when they are lying down, they are scared. Yep. So I'm going to do one more. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Well, I definitely don't want to play this card because it will scare me instantly. So <laughs> I'm going to start with this one. Move seven spaces. Okay. Which wow, I think is the most one. movement you can get. So yep. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's no bonus effect here. You also need to have your Zeds on a bonus effect in order to be able to use it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's... This one here is move seven spaces. This card would let me catch a Z, which could let me put one onto a space to use the effect later. Right. All right, so I draw one card. It is not a wolf. And now it goes to my turn, yes. which I played this one. Now, instead of moving, I want to try to play uh, Z first on this one. So uh, in the subsequent turn, when I land this, or whenever I land it anyway, um, that's what I get. Gain two wings. If your pillow is the highest on the scoreboard, gain two more. Yes. So well, at the moment we're even, but yeah. that's a uh, nice yeah. catch up. If so you're if you do behind. that, if you do that, then I'll get extra, extra two. Yes. Okay. Okay. Do you draw? Draw. I keep drawing the wall, but that's okay. I'm not. Nightmare on the moves board. one space. Yep. And another. Thank you. Another one. Two space. Hopefully it catches Tarrant. <laughs> Maybe not. Two spaces. Maybe What's going? Who shuffled this? <laughs> Who shuffled this? Yeah, no, that's it. <laughs> I need to get out of the way. Mm -hmm. All right. I think I will. <coughs> what I'm going. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a conservative approach this first round. So I can move one or five. I'm just going to move five. One, two, three, four, and I'll just stop there. So I can stop as soon as I cross the fence. I'm coming off, I get five winks for crossing the fence. Yep. So I'm worried about how quickly this nightmare is moving. Mm. Um, and I know that eight versus five in the first round, I can make that up as long as I get some good bonuses on the board. So yep. I now uh, discard my hand. Mm -hmm. I'll put it under there because there is an effect out here that might, uh, might have an impact. Okay, yeah. my go. I'm going to use that one to move five spaces yep. so from here to here mm -hmm. now I don't have anything and I don't want to use the effect anyway yep. yes now I'm the only one that's still going in this round yes so once that happens in order to make sure the night in order to speed things up you have to reveal one card first which will only have an effect if it's the nightmare and then I take the next one to my hand card. now with this I would like to move seven spaces. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll try to do that. Give me five, please. So you get five winks. I might get busted. Who knows? So you're going to continue? Yep. Yeah. I'll open, move one space, and take. Okay. I will do move three spaces. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. And I'll reveal here. Nothing. And I'll take here. Ooh, two spaces. Oh, this is this is risky. Uh, I don't have a big movement card, so I'm gonna just play. I'm just gonna play this one. Move three spaces. One, two, three. Okay. And hoping push my luck. Oh, that's okay, but I would like that. Oh, this is bad. See, I'm just sharing it to you because Heron's not on the run anyway. So mm. move one spaces and catch one, or move one or two spaces or catch one. So that's like really bad movement. Uh, I, I, I only have one, so I'm still okay with that. So I'm going to do that. Move two spaces. This oh. is risky. Open. Oh, no! It's 
Nightmare scares all Aww. sheep. Um, well, before your turn ends, yep. you can use Sweet Dream if you wish. I will do that, actually. I forgot. So gain two. That's it. Okay. And take it off. All right, now you go. Oh, you know what? It doesn't really matter because either way, I get busted anyway. That's true. As soon yeah. as you cross the fence, you're going to yep. go ahead of me. No, so. I'm not going to do that. All Sorry. Right. And then I will take this. Move two spaces. Nah. So... It's a good example of me yes. busted. So that means I don't get any points. You go back to don't zero. Get anything. Yeah. And so that is the end of this round. We got through it got through it very quickly. A lot of the nightmare mm -hmm. cards came in quite early. Yes. So to resolve the round, I had the most winks. So I get to drop my pillow eight spaces. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna and try to shuffle this. Stella woke up. And so Stella only gets to drop three spaces. Mm -hmm. So it was a, I played a very, I played it very safe in that round. Yeah, that's actually uh, worth it. But yeah, the nightmare was moving so quickly that yeah. it paid off for me in the end. So I feel like that helps because there are a few mechanics that is not probably useful with other other games. So that's good to demonstrate yes. what happened. All right. All right. So now, now we get to add, we will each be adding one of these to the board. And we get to add our own Zeds onto the card. Some of them allow us to add three times of use, and some of them allow us to add an infinite use, which is on the other side of this token. So I'll just show what we've got here. We've got double dutch, which is three Zed tokens, and play the other card from your hand. So it gives you the opportunity to play two cards. We've got rush ahead. This one lets you gain one wink and then play the top card of the deck blindly. So another one where you can move twice, mm -hmm. but you don't know what the other movement is going to be. We've got copycat, which is move X spaces. X is equal to the number of movement on the previous player's last played card. And this is where we've got to make sure the last played card is the one that's on top of the discard pile because mm -hmm. some other cards are going to come in. And perfect landing. So this one, if I were to put this on, say, the three, it is if you cross this fence, if you cross the fence this turn before landing here, gain winks equal to the number that this space is on. So you would gain three winks for landing there. You from could, number 10. From number t from 10 or before it. Mm -hmm. you would, if you moved it all the way over here, you would gain seven winks but you would need to move that seven spaces in one go. Okay. So I am going to, I'm going to go for a perfect landing. I'm Whoa, going to place it I there. that one too. I'm going to place it there with an infinite. And the reason I'll place it there is step back is right after it. So I know that I can, mm -hmm. if I leap the fence and you do get to see another one before picking, mm -hmm. if I leap the fence and land on four or five, then I'll get four wings. Mm. This one here, final sprint. If you are scared, move forward three, uh, seven spaces. Oh, I don't know if I want to do that. Copycat, move X spaces. Oh, uh, I feel like that's actually the one that I had my eyes on. Um, okay, and wink, play the top cup. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that because I want to rush ahead. That's a real YOLO card, that one. Yeah, <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> like you, um, like what I did before. Oh, it's just very yellow. Okay, this is an unlimited, so I'm going to flip that to unlimited. Play this one. Actually, I'm going to put it right here. Change my mind. All right, that's it. Okay. okay. Just pop that on there as well. Okay, so we can see what's coming up next time. Second win. Discard <coughs> your. Uh, sorry. You discard your hand. You may become brave. Okay. And becoming brave is, uh, if you are scared, becoming unscared. Yeah, I'm going to put it here so I can okay. see it here. Move those there, we'll put the deck up into here. Yep. Alrighty. So now we do starting two cards. And I'm the first player. Yep, we look for nightmare cards. Mm -hmm. I've got two of them. Wow. So I've got the nightmare moves one space. And the nightmare scares all sheep on its space <coughs> and adjacent. So the sheep aren't on the board yet, so that one has no effect. That one is not. 
Another one. Another one. Mm. Nightmare moves two steps. All right. That's it. That's it. All right. I feel like I want to try to catch something first. So uh, we'll play this one to yep. catch one Z, which I will try to put it here because, you know, just try to get. Yeah, some good winks on offer there. Yeah. And that's it. So I'll take that. Mm -hmm. And that is not the werewolf card. Okay. I will play this one, move four or catch one. And I do feel it would be worthwhile catching one as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, well, actually, I'm going to put this you have to put here, it there, here because you know, part of my strategy for getting perfect landings was to have that flexibility. That's true. And not a werewolf one? Not a, not a wolf. No, oh, yeah, wolf one. So I'm going to also catch two. I feel like just building it here. So I'm going to put it there. Uh, it says I can catch two, and I'm going to put second one here. Okay. Not a wolf. Okay. No one's, no, none of us has moved yet. Yes, we're both playing it very uh, cautiously to start here. Because the monster is right there. True. Um, I will play this one and... One with two spaces. I will catch one and I'm going to catch this one. Okay. Nothing? Nothing. I don't have a really good card because it's kind of like gets me to the uh, dangerous position. Maybe I should probably use it. I mean, there's already three out there. Or I can just catch one and then just kind of like see what cards comes out. I'm going to catch one again, which I'm going to use um, here again. I feel like I'm probably going to use that. I just don't want to move until the <laughs> werewolf moves because mine's like moving four spaces. It'll be too close. Okay, you'll go. Yes, but there is, I mean, there is only one more in there that scares you. That's right. I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to, I'm going to jump out. I'm going to be bold and move and move two. Yes. Yeah. Um, now I'm going to move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And? The alternative on that card is to gain three winks out. All right. Yes. All right, you'll go. Okay. I shall move four. Move four or gain one. Same place now. Oh! Nightmare moves two spaces. Oh! So close. That's it? Yep. I'm gonna run away with seven. <laughs> bye, bye, Tarrant. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Continue. And okay. now. So you get five winks yep. for that. Game one. An extra wink and, and play. play the top card. Now, I don't have to remove my Z because it's the. Um, infinite. Infinite, thank you. Move three or catch one. I'm too scared to move. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'm still okay. I'm not too bad. Yeah, I'm gonna <coughs> move three. One, two, three. Hello. Hello. And then? You were just here. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll play this one. Yep. Move one and catch one. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, I like the look of rush ahead. Mm. Okay. Alright, I will go to move four. One, two, three. Oh, okay, so actually, no, that's not enough. I'm purple. Move seven. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to finish there. I'm not that brave okay. this time. <laughs> well, brave's probably not the right term because that's a term in the game. Yeah. I'm stopping this time. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to gain two winks with this. Reveal and draw. Mm -hmm. Nightmare moves two spaces and I'm now scared. Mm -hmm. And I draw to replace it. So now I am scared because mm -hmm. I'm in a, a tricky yeah. situation here. Yeah. Because, of course, I'm trying to stick that perfect landing. I've been hanging on to this four spaces oh. card. But now I yeah. kind of have to run away. Well, maybe I can just go for the, the big one. Hmm. I've got a lot of... I have, to, I have to do two laps, really, to catch up. So mm -hmm. I'm going to... Move one. I'm going to try to do my optimal strategy. <laughs> Yeah, I'll do yeah, it. Okay. Move one and place one. If I put this here, I can get a couple of extra winks potentially. Yeah. Reveal and draw. That's good. Yeah, one or five. I'll do this and move five. So one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. I get the five points for crossing. 
Now, this one is gain a wink and play the top card. So I have to remove this. Mm -hmm. Gain a wink. YOLO! She you YOLO as well. Play the top card. Wow, move lucky. two or catch two. Mm -hmm. Move two. So I can move two. And then you're gonna be in the move backward one space. You might become brave. That's probably not bad because... It's not too bad, but yeah. I, I now right. know that my next crossing of the fence is gonna win me this round. Mm -hmm. So there's not a strong motivation for me to spend this to take the perfect landing That's actually points. true, yep. So That's I'm it. going to... So I moved the two spaces. I'm not going to use the step back power. The reveal, Intake. my draw. Wow, very lucky, Tarrant. Very lucky, but I'm not there yet. Yep, three or four. So I move four. Yep. And reveal. Reveal. Mm -hmm. And take. And take. Nightmare scares all on its adjacent spaces. That That's is good. Um, lucky. Lucky, yeah. but I have to draw another. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yay, win. Okay, Taryn wins again this one. All right. So you want that one? You get to move your pillow mm. by eight, mine's by five. Yep. Okay. Now, do I get any benefit here, last player? Sorry? I uh, don't get benefit. Yeah. Well, the benefit is you got five, you got two extra pillow movements from last time because you didn't wake up this time. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So we got a lot further through the deck that time. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So you were first player, you get to place... I'll place this one. So what do we have here? Discard. Second wind. Discard to become brave. Put it there. Discard your hand to become brave. Yes. All right, you'll go. Very good. So we reveal a new one. <clears throat> Snooze moves for every two Zs in your supply. Move one space. Move one space. That's pretty good. But you would have to put three. I'd have to put oh, three yeah. Zs onto there. That's true. Um, you like the look of it? I like the look of it because I oh, feel I again. can. Well, your next one would be four. Well, you got lucky again, Tarrant. Yep. Yep. I feel if I put that there. I mean. It's technically, it's like, it's push your luck as the mechanic is. Yeah. All right. If I can spend some of those, I can combo it with that perfect landing. That's, oh, so that's really what I want to work. Mm -hmm. Oops, one more. Oh, yeah. Uh, you go first. So you reset to zero winks for the next mm -hmm. night of sleep. Karen almost won again, maybe. All right. All right, hopefully I push it real good this time. Push it real good. Yeah. Okay. Right. Nightmare moves two. Mm -hmm. Destroying my snooze moves. Sorry. Scares everyone adjacent. Okay. You go first. So I do. Oh, do I not have anything on Russia? Oh, I've already used my Russia head. Mm -hmm. I like Russia head. Well, you <laughs> you said that is your love? Yes, and then you like it too. Hmm. Mm. Um, let's start by... Hmm. Let's start by moving six. Wow, very good. Okay. I will move. Oh, I don't have a lot of good ones. So I'm just going to move one. Too scared. Yep. Alright, I will... Not move on that. Uh, I will place one here. Mm. Nightmare moves one space. Okay. I will move six spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And take that. Yep. I will move three spaces. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Draw one. I will move spot four. One, two, three, four. Draw one. Ah! Five two, wings. Two spaces. Okay. That's okay. All right. I'll move six spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. I become scared. Then I spend this one. Very good. To become brave and move backwards one space Ooh. and I stick the perfect landing mm -hmm. to gain four wings. Wow! 
Uh, if you cross the fence this turn before landing here. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. It's not really. I've got this card, so I'm gonna play that and move one, two, three, four. Oh, I'm gonna get bad if I go there. So I better not do that. I'm gonna just probably catch this for future turns, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay, I shall move three. Very good. I'll move five. One, two, three, four, five. And that's um, okay for now. Mm -hmm. Here I go. I'll move two. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four. Okay, I'll move four. And I will take this. Very good. So that's four winks mm -hmm. because um, my pillow is I'll behind. Just rotate that one around yep. so you can see. That is two winks and two if you are higher on the scoreboard with your pillow. So which I am. Yes. So, I got so we are tied four. on nine. Yeah. And okay. I wait. I need to. Yep. yep. Okay. Move five. Mm -hmm. Nice. One, two, three, four, five. So that's another nine points. Wow. Five for the fence and four for the perfect landing. Mm. Nightmare moves one space. Oh. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do one, two, three. Okay. Move three spaces. Yep. And then again a wink. Five points for the yep. or five winks for the fence. Plus one for that one. One for that. And then YOLO. Yay! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then again two, please. Okay, another four. Yes, another four. Sorry. Yeah. I am behind and then I'll take now. That. Yeah. Okay. Um, I still only need I only need six more winks to win in this round. Yeah, that's actually not not far at all. So might, might work for you. I'll push for it. So four. Mm -hmm. I go up there. One, two, three, four. Okay, you were there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Very good. How many <laughs> how many of those? There's still more to come. He's only had six movement. There's a total of uh, twelve movement worth of mm -hmm. the nightmare. Four twos and four ones. I'm I'm gonna stop it there, because I'm too scared. <laughs> there you go. Ta da. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you go to twenty-four. Yep. Now, do you, you need to, yeah, do the hard one because you're on your own. Yes. I like that mechanic so that, you know, you can't just rack up everything when you, the last one standing. Yeah. All right. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to finish it here. How are you going to finish it here? You think you can, yeah. I, I want to get, I need the sweet dream winks and I need to get over Ooh. the fence. I don't have a two, but I've got a one. So I'll move one. I can catch one Z. It's not really beneficial to me at the moment, so I'm not going to. Yep. And now you reveal. Now I reveal. And then take. And take. Uh, what's which that? Which is the nightmare scares adjacent. Yeah, that's so that okay. Doesn't harm me. All right. So I didn't get, I didn't get what I wanted to score there. Mm. So my options. If I leap the fence now and stop, I'm one short of victory. I can just try to hightail it around the board, I suppose. So this will, this one really is a push your luck element. So <laughs> it's very tense now. So what I will do, I will move three spaces. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Jump up to 23 wow, points. Wow, you almost win that. I will spend that this one to move... Uh, to move one space for each two Zs in my supply. This wasn't there at the time, so I get to move one. Mm -hmm. I'll spend this one to gain a wink. Yep. So I I haven't you triggered just, the end yet. I have to survive, to survive the round. Yep. To play the top card blindly. Move just, two spaces. Yeah, that's okay. Um, and I don't have a power here on the step back. So yep. that is... That is that. I need to. I still need to get around. I've got to move four here, yeah. which is not enough. First, and then take. Reveal first, then take. Wow, very move lucky. Move five or gain two. 
Three. Neither of those is five enough. Five is good, though. Yeah, almost. So I'll play the five. You can still get to wink. I, I can. It doesn't doesn't benefit me to gain mm -hmm. winks here, so I'll just yeah. leave them there. Reveal, moves one. Mm -hmm. Take into hand, moves two. Take into hand. And you win. I win. All right. Yay! So well done. Now I can move one, leap over. Five winks that's and a quick, end it there. That's a quick one. That was quick. We got through it in three rounds. Yes. Oh, well, it, it doesn't always, it's not always that quick. Yeah. Oh, yes. Other games are. Uh, other game we've usually. seen it. We've seen the whole board fill up, mm -hmm. and we've gotten to five because we both got woken yeah, well up. Well done, Tarrant. Well done. We played something else earlier, and Tarrant won. So, winning strike today. <laughs> yeah. So yes, there we have. That is. Um, that let's, is the game of Sheepy Time. Let's show the other. Uh, bad guys. Yeah, so there's a few things that vary this up. You'll bad have people. a you'll have a bigger deck when there's uh, when there's more players, and you've got two different enemies you can mm -hmm. use. Uh, you use the same token for them, but we've got the bump in the night enemy. Uh, this one, rather than we actually didn't see very much of the nightmare moving through players and yeah. scaring them. Uh, but normally, if if this nightmare moves into mm -hmm. you or through you, you will get scared. Uh, but here, this one jumps around, so its cards are jump three spaces forward, jump two spaces forward, jump one forward, one backward or two backwards. So it's going to be gradually moving forward but leaping back and forward a bit, which means you know there's more spaces that are at risk yep. at any given time. But you don't get you don't suffer from being moved through only for being landed on. This is good because um, also this puzzle, the mov movement puzzle is good. Also depends on what cut you have, of course, but you can combo it like, like you did before. Yes. Uh, the other one is the Sinister Spider. So this is the more advanced one that comes with the game. Uh, there is a web token that will go on the board and it will it'll place its web and then move to its web. And it will be kind of uh, going back and forward between that. So it's going to move fewer times, but it needs... Mm -hmm. But when it moves, it will advance more quickly. And the web is sticky, and so you can't do a seven move through the web. You've got to stop on the web and then keep moving. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. Interesting. It's, it certainly has unique mechanic. Yep. Um, There's a total of 30 tiles in here. Ooh. Move all sheep backward or forward in one space. <clears throat> you can really mess around with people there. Gain four winks if you have the fewest winks. Uh, three winks if you're scared. So there are many in here that combo with when you're scared. They can be uh, quite powerful, but obviously very risky. Uh, trampoline, move <laughs> move again as many spaces as you just did. So yeah, lots of different ways to create little combos that will work for you when you have your Zs there. Or not work for me like I did. <laughs> it didn't really work for me, yeah. but that's okay. So that is a pretty much full game, kind of like a shorter version of Sheepy Time. And that's our playthrough of Sheepy Time. We hope you enjoyed this video. And hopefully you've enjoyed the summer spectacular so far and the rest of it. Until next time. The evil wizard's plans were in ruin. In celebration, Giuseppe, the caring pizza baron, offered the victorious order without borders 20 victoriously priced sun-fired pizzas and use of his world-famous pit of balls. Anticipating an evening filled with pizza, friendship, and balls. Danger was the last thing on their minds. Danger, however, has a way of working itself into even the most well-planned meal. Right then, a throng of demons, led by a tiny imp in a murder machine, erupted from the basement, looking for a tussle. Amidst the ensuing chaos, an overhead throw slammed Giuseppe against the sun-fired pizza forge, launching it into overdrive. The resulting beam of pure sunlight struck the imp's mech suit. That warlord got me, boys. Grab him and let's get out of here. Scooping up their leader and bagging the befuddled Giuseppe, the demons absconded into the dark. 
there, below the floorboards, one of the evil wizard's portals to the world of eternal and uncaring darkness remained open, daring the order to step through into... Ludwig's Labyrinth! Ludwig's Labyrinth is a 1-6 to six player legacy-style campaign game. Heroes work cooperatively to explore the mysterious labyrinth in pursuit of villains who are controlled by the game itself. Over a multi-session campaign full of hilarious narrative, you'll discover new enemies, face off against unique bosses, and navigate impactful ethical conundrums. Will you dry up the tiny village as well to fill your water skin? or press on with a powerful first. Your decisions can permanently unlock cards, buy persistent upgrades, and open delicious envelopes. By the end of the campaign, your game will have a unique footprint which you can take into free play mode, or reset and start all over. In addition to being a standalone game, Ludwig's Labyrinth is also an expansion to Minions of Mordak, adding a ton of new features, such as nine new heroes, three henchmen, and five villains with amazing miniatures, 21 engraved dice, 32 labyrinth map tiles, 63 illustrated minions, 40 boss AI cards, hundreds of multi-choice event cards, new treasures, villain, and hero spells, new melee and ranged feat decks, and a campaign book with 10 mysterious envelopes. All this in a sleek, well-designed game trays insert. A hilarious campaign, a winding labyrinth, and a host of new mechanics will make Ludwig's Labyrinth a game that keeps coming back to your table. My peoples, what's up? Welcome to Semper Ludimus. What does Semper Ludimus mean, Liz? It means we always play. And so this is going to be a set of videos about games that we always play. This, this is ready? literally <laughs> <laughs> why we invented Semper Ludimus. My name is Jason <laughs> up from Shelf Stories. That's Liz from Beyond, uh, Beyond Solitaire. We are going to run through our top 50 50 games of all time for the Dice Tower. This was a special from the Kickstarter. That was run earlier in the year, one of the stretch goals, and you guys knocked it all out, and gals knocked it all out. Uh, so we are going to present our top 50-50, and we're doing so in tandem with the Summer Spectacular on the Dice Tower. So content for the peoples, Liz, content for the people. Oh, uh, <laughs> although I just, I just want to put a disclaimer on this, which is that I've actually never bothered to make a top 50 list before in my entire life. I'm horrible at like deciding what should go in what slot. So this is a snapshot of just what I felt warm and fuzzy about today. <laughs> yeah, if we did this in about uh, three months, which will never happen, this will never happen again. Uh, the list may look really, at least Liz's list might look really different. Uh, I did a top a uh, top hundred list for the uh, at least of cooperative games, and it's not that <laughs> different. Um, so at least for me, so in terms of telling the people's um, how we put together a list, so I I kind of keep a running list of cooperative games. I'm a huge cooperative gamer. Uh, I have a geek list, so it's like I just look at my geek list and it went down and then fit and then so because this list is not specific, it's just it's, it's all our favorite games. So I just kind of went over to my rated games over on BGG. What's nine? What's what's eight point five? Everything on my list is eight point five or above, and we get to the nines fairly quickly. Uh, Liz is not so uh, sanguine with her ratings, um, so mine was fairly easy to put together. And I gotta say that I my my meant me a little bit of a, on the soft side. I like a lot of light games, <laughs> but uh, we'll get to that as we get into it. So Liz, how did you approach your very first top fifty list? So I only rate things on BGG that I've actually reviewed, which means mm. that there are a lot of games on here that I don't have ratings for because this is your favorite games. So guess what, everybody? I normally only talk about solo games, but this will be a list that includes multiplayer games that I really like as well. So that shall, that'll be different. Um, but I, I looked at everything that I'd given kind of an eight and up. And then I added in a bunch of multiplayer stuff and then things that I haven't reviewed yet that I really like. 
Mm. I just kind of made this like soup of games. And then I just moved them around until I felt okay about where they were in terms of ranking. Mm -hmm. And that's what we it's got. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is more art than science, obviously. <laughs> this is cooking, not baking people. <laughs> All right, uh, so let's get into it. Uh, we are going to get into our top 50-50. I'm going to get 50. Liz going to get 50. This video is 50 to 41. So ladies first, uh, let's go ahead and hit us with your top 50. And you notice that we are going to use, or I'm going to use when I do the editing, we're going to use Roman numerals. So if you don't know your Roman numerals 50 to 1, then go ahead and open that Wikipedia page and learn your Roman numerals. Should have taken Latin, kids. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so... My, uh, my number 50, um, so this is the weirdest one on the list actually. I, I went with the most sort of like emotional pick from my childhood. So this is a game I used to play with my grandparents and my parents, my brother, like my aunt and uncle. We'd all have like dinner or, you know, whenever we did go on a family trip, um, we would all play this game. And it is Facts in Five. So Whoa. this is probably in quality terms, the worst game on the list, but I just don't care. Um, <laughs> Basically, you have five categories. It could be movies. Um, in older versions of the game, there's weird stuff like, you know, words from other languages. And you pick five categories, five letters, and you have five minutes to fill in the chart with things in the category that like start with that letter. So it's very categories, but, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, it's just the things that bring you into gaming are the things that you loved when you were younger that you, st I would still throw down with Facts and Five anytime. Uh, <laughs> So, I mean, I don't think it's the best game design in the world, but I also just don't care. Mm -hmm. So it's on the list. <laughs> there it is. No, uh, it's very, <laughs> this is why we're doing this, Liz. This is why we're, we're, we're which uh, if the people in Dice Tower don't know, Liz and I are gaming besties. Uh, we always collaborate on stuff. We always find ways to collaborate on stuff. And this is a part of um, a good coming together because my number 50 is also a nostalgia pick. Ooh, so, let's hear yeah. it. It's not a nostalgia pick for my family, but it is a nostalgia pick. It is the game that got me into hobby gaming. And it just so happened to land around here. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to lead off with this. Uh, it is Lords of Waterdeep. Ooh, okay. So Lords of Waterdeep was the my very first Euro game. Back when I didn't know what a Euro game was, <laughs> I was a Dungeons & Dragons player. I've been a Dungeons & Dragons player since my childhood. Uh, and I was really big into it in like the early 2010s. Uh, and I was traveling to cons and I was, you know, doing, you know, I was DMing. I was, I was really, really playing a lot of role playing. And then I went to a con, I think it was 2011 and you know, they're, they're doing their thing, but then they're featuring, Hey, look, there's this Euro game about Dungeons and Dragons. Like, what is that? And, <laughs> and you know, um, it's a worker placement game. Uh, and it is a game in which you are, you know, playing nobles and you're completing contracts, but who really cares? Because it, it's not really thematic. It's a Euro game, but it had enough D and D trappings, and it it realized the world well enough in terms of its art and you know its kind of overall story. I was hooked, and you know the Scoundrels and Callport expansion is an excellent expansion. I re highly recommend it for people who want a deeper worker placement experience. Uh, but it, so I mean, is it my fiftieth favorite game? But it was like around there, and I'm like, you know what? I got to put it on there. I got to talk about it because it nostalgia. You know, just like you said before, nostalgia. That's the that is an important part of our gaming experience as well. Absolutely. That's it's also that's a more respectable choice game gamer hobby gamer wise than fact. Oh no 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 no! <laughs> I I'm, I got one for you, Liz. A little bit further up, I got my version of that. <laughs> <laughs> I got my version. Don't worry, but and you'll know, and you will know. Is it you know? <laughs> you be quiet. <laughs> no spoilers. What are you talking about? <laughs> That was our number 50. So let's move on to number 49. Liz, we're just going to go back and forth. Give yeah, us number absolutely. 49. So my 49 is one that used to kind of hang around the bottom of the top 10. I mean, the top 100, like people's choice solo games, but I still have just a soft spot for it because I still like to pull it out because it's quick. It's fun. It's stinky. It's uh, Limes. It's spelled Limes, but it's Limes because it's about like Roman boundary markers. So it's just like a card lane game where you're trying to build fields or, you know, make sure that you have your little houses touching the river or there's places where woodsmen can go get some wood and then you place your little meeples in those positions to try to score as high as possible with the cards you're dealt simple still fun i really like it and i wish that they would reprint it because i think it's really right. enjoyable it is like savagely out of print it's not even like a little bit out of print it's like no. 
<laughs> it's like stricken from the record pharaoh has spoken <laughs> like, lee may shall not be printed ever again type type out of print yeah i mean it's it's not one that i would normally recommend but on a top 50 list i mean it's one that i just can't ever get away get rid of i've been doing some really gnarly cuts in my collection because i just have too many games mm -hmm. and i just can't get rid of it can't get rid of lee Mays. it's just stuck like i love it i can't i always if i find it again in the closet i'm like oh i should play that and then i'll play it like eight times ten times nice put it back so obviously I really love it, even if I, you know, right. can't recommend it officially because you can't get it. I have never played it. Um, so I'm looking I'm looking forward to playing it at one point because Liz and I are known for solo. Uh, also, Mike Lee's from the Dark Tower. We've really invaded <laughs> <laughs> the Dark Tower, even converted Tom to uh, some solo gaming. Uh, that one player guild list is going to come up for us a lot. Uh, so if you wanted to go over to one player guild, their top 100 people's choice runs every year and if you want to feature all if you want to sample a lot of the games we're going to talk about that list is probably a good repository for a lot of the games uh that's coming up oh yeah all right uh although lee is a little bit uh down <laughs> yeah yeah that's like of years of yore like that you can tell that it's 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 like an ancient choice <laughs> right. but that's what the people are here for all right uh so my number 49 i could not settle because it, as you can see and i'm going to turn my camera over here you see this 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 over here? You see that? You see all oh, that? Yeah. It's a lot of pandemic. It's a lot. It's a lot of pandemic. And yeah. you know what? I'm gonna spoil it. Pandemic's number one game. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who knows me, <laughs> but the, the, this the the excitement's gonna be my number two because I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna bet that you don't know my number two. Um. So pandemic's my favorite game. Um. Every pandemic, oh, everyone, uh, except for Cthulhu. That was, that was okay. But like the hysterical ones and dice and I, I just love every pandemic. So I could not. I can't just fill the list with pandemic. I could, but that would be like, that would be boring. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, this is the whole point of this is to share a lot of games. Uh, and there's also like, if you look over here, I got Thunderbirds, which is another pandemic variant from Matt Leacock and the Forbidden Games. I got Forbidden Games all over the place too. I am going to settle on uh, Forbidden Sky as Ooh. my number 49. The reason is I love the underdog and that is the one that people put the most junk on as like, oh, this isn't what I want in a game. And, you know, uh, I think the, the Dice Tower guys didn't review it well and they're like, and, and all over the place. It was not reviewed very well. I love that game, it's so good, ah! <laughs> it is, uh, <laughs> I mean, so, you know, in the Forbidden Games, you're usually kind of like, you know, on a, um, a land that's falling apart, right? And you have to either uh, search for treasure or, or something. Here, you have to like repair the, um, the, you're in a space station, you have to kind of repair the space station. And it has like this toy factor where it's like you get to attach the little wires and then you have a little rocket that, you know, doo -doo -doo. and it's just like <laughs> this little toy because that's the forbidden thing is like put little toys in there to make people uh, happy. I think this game is amazing. Although I can see people not liking it multiplayer. I more like it for solo. It's a neat little puzzle for solo, it really is. Um, I like what, I like the the move forward it did for the pen, for the, for that system, you know, uh, I love that the game continues to innovate within that that general like cooperative system. So, I mean, Forbidden Sky, it's it's a really amazing one. I don't know if that's it. Did you ever? You didn't ever. You never played it, right, Liz? No, I played um, I played Forbidden Island. I played Forbidden Desert. I never did play Forbidden Sky. So I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's my number forty nine. Uh, all right, number forty eight. All right, so my number 48 is, it's basically a go-to game for me. Every time I'm playing with a new gamer, if I'm getting somebody to play with me on Board Game Arena and they've never played before, it's a game that I trust myself to teach and that I enjoy every time, even after all these years, that's Lost Cities. Just that yeah. simple two-player yep. card game. Mm -hmm. Let's go on some expeditions that are actually just about putting cards down in number order. But there's something just really entrancing about that game because that lovely little push and pull with the other person of like, ooh, I really want this in my hand because I'm looking mm -hmm. for something else, but like, I don't want to give it to that jerk across for me um you know it's it's in an eternally perfect mechanism for a two-player game and you know i will always love lost cities i think even though i guess it's not like the hot two-player game anymore right i mean i mean it'll never go out of style yeah. I, I think like trick taking is kind of a rising because you have like claim or fox in the forest and like, yeah. so we go through cycles with this stuff but like in terms of just classic there's an app for it and my app has maybe like a thousand plays <laughs> or something I'm, i love classic card play you're gonna see that on my list uh no lost cities is i mean that game is sublime it really is i haven't disagreed with any one of your your picks liz come on you need to cheese me off at some point no these picks are fire what are you gonna <laughs> tell me <laughs> 
actually what was kind of fun about making a top 50 list is that it was nice to be like wow there are 50 games that i really like and stand by telling people they should play <laughs> that's a good thing i can't believe that you haven't cheesed me off yet okay I i'm gonna get to one though i'm gonna get to one all right all right <laughs> uh, maybe actually this one uh, i know you know i like it but i know in, your, in terms of your personal thing you're not like you're like Ugh. okay um so it's actually above me here it is call to adventure so call yeah look i made oh. yes it only took three faces to make her make a face <laughs> well we're at the bottom of the list we're we're in the we're scraping the <laughs> we're scraping i've played over 500 games <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> we're not scraping at all <laughs> uh so this is call to adventure it is the um storytelling card game from brotherwise games uh it's kind of meant to simulate in a card fashion uh you know growing a hero so like you start off with your origin then you go into your your motivation i think it's called and your destiny and it's it's a set collection game it's real real simple with a little with a dice mechanic so in order to get the cards you have to kind of complete tests and that's where the dice come in these dice are these chunky tile things which are really neat the, the production is just like a really neat production the art is amazing uh i it wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the ip integration like if it would just kind of be a game for me if it was off the off the base set, but it realizes the name of the wind by Patrick Rothfuss, and it realizes the Stormlight Archive in particular because I love the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, so if it wasn't for the Stormlight, Ar I, I probably should specify uh, it's Call to Adventure: The Stormlight Archive is the okay. one that's here because of the IP integration, and it tells a, it just lets me imaginatively play in the in the world, and I just I love worlds. I I am a I am a, a sucker sucker for ip make it anywhere of a decent game and i will probably make it pretty high on the list so if you stink which i'm thinking of one game in particular that took an ip that i love that made it made a stinky game out of it <laughs> that's really that really breaks my heart you're gonna get low grade for that um but if you are pretty good and i, I like the call to adventure system it's pretty good it's not like a gamer's game in terms of like heavy choices and you know agency or anything like that it's a breezy time for your family uh, and I just like the imaginative world. So I know you played it and... I found it to be deeply mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> deep, deep with the mediocrity. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's like, whatever. If that floats your boat, that's fine. But like, oh, I would never funny. look at a shelf and be like, wow, you have Call to Adventure. Let's play that. Like every game on this list. Actually, my main criterion was if somebody said, hey, Liz, do you want to play this game right now? I'd be like, yeah. And that that's something I can say for every game that I put on my, my top 50, which is like, I think that that regardless of rank, that I think it was meaningful for me. I may have to so take your like solo you card too. away because you just said when somebody else asks you to play, you'll play. Eh. I don't care about other people. I don't care. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you think, people. <laughs> now, my, my, the top of my list is very solo heavy, but I made sure to put some of my fave like sure. multiplayers in the, to fill out the, the bottom half. Because like, yeah, my, my gaming life is dominated by solo games and it's just the way it is. Right. But that said, my number 47 is another game that I love to play with other people. Every time a spot opens up, I'm like, yo, can I get in that game? And mm -hmm. that's actually Seven Wonders. Okay. I know it's all it's not the best okay. drafting game in the world probably anymore I don't care every time I play it I have a good time um I really enjoy screwing over my neighbors and this is why I have to game solo mostly <laughs> but it's driven just away, it's a classic. Liz. you drove away with your with your square roots and your uh your military might <laughs> But, you know, anything that has kind of a, even a pasted on ancient theme, I enjoy, um, you know, and it's just, a, it's another one of those games that has sort of a timeless feel about it. And that's something that I really like in games. And, you know, solo gaming has been really innovative lately. And I like that too. But I also think that, you know, a person's gaming diet should have like a lot of sure. just right. stalwarts. So that's basically like this part of the list is all that stuff. Right. I got no problem with Seven Wonders. I got, you know, uh, it's I, I go back and forth on it because like I remember when I first liked it, I was like, wow, this is great. I've never played a card drafting game. And then I got really mad at the scoring, you know, and, and it's yeah. like, oh, this is kind of confusing. And then some of the expansions got uh, dumped in there, which I think expansions are good, but like it's a lot. It's, it gets to be a lot yeah. more for like what's supposed to be a simple game. And now it's like, OK, I'm <laughs> Seven Wonders, let's do it. Um, OK, so uh, another IP uh, jaunt for me. Uh, this one is the Dresden Files cooperative card game. Uh, will not appear on a lot of lists. I mean, that game has kind of come and gone. I think it was a Kickstarter in 2016. Uh, it is a card-based game, very simple puzzle. It's a, it's a straight-up puzzle. 
Uh, and you know, you, you're playing all the characters, like you're playing Harry, the, the, the wizard. And you, you know, if you're playing solo, you're picking two other of, you know, Harry's friends, or you could play up to five players. Uh, and you're playing, you know, one card at a time and you're, you know, putting, and there's a, a row, a central row of enemies and obstacles. So, and clues to solve and like uh, cases to solve. So like you can do two different things. Like you can play your cards to attack the enemies. You can play your cards to solve the cases, which is basically the same thing, red and, red and green. Uh, and I, I mean, it's just, it's a simple puzzle. I don't know if it would be on here without the app. I think I've played like the app a ton. Uh, and this is maybe some of some games are like, you know, I would not play, I, they wouldn't be nearly as high if I didn't have that availability on the app. This is definitely one of them. Um, but I just feel like it, in terms of a simple card game, it realizes the IP pretty well. Uh, it, it, every scenario is, is a book. And I remember what happened in the book. You know, it makes me remember, oh yeah, this is when the, the red vampire, the red court vampires happened. And oh yeah, this is where the werewolves attacked. And this is where the, you know, this, this, that, and the third thing happened. Um, so a little bit spoiler B, uh, if you want to get into that, but it's fine. Uh, I, I've played thousands <laughs> perhaps <laughs> of game. It's, it's a comfort food game. You know, that's, I, I, and this is not the only comfort food game I have on the list, but and because of the IP, uh, definitely puts it over the edge for me. That is number 47, the Dresden Files Cooperative Card Game. You've played this one too, right, Liz? No, I actually have not. Ah, you wouldn't like it. Okay, well, I won't <laughs> <laughs> Let me spare you right now, Liz. <laughs> this is not a game where if Liz comes over, I'm like, oh, let's play this game. <laughs> no. <laughs> With you, everything would be fun, Jason. Aww, we'll make it work. <laughs> That's so, thank you. That's so sweet. Uh, so that was my number 47. We are moving on. Number 46. Yeah, it's actually funny that you mentioned that as your comfort food game because this is a game I describe as my potato chip game. Like, again, this one's- We like, are lining up. Are you, Liz, so, oh, Liz. This is one of those ones where like, everybody's too cool for it now, except me apparently. But like, this is a game I keep in my classroom. I always teach it to new gamers. Um, I teach this to people who are maybe like getting into hobby gaming and don't know what to do. It's Splendor. It's the easiest game to teach. It's the simplest game, and yet it is really fun. I could play this game all night mm. with anybody. I just really like it, and like it, it's, it doesn't get old for me. Uh, probably because I don't play with a game group all the time or the same people all the time. So for me, every every time I encounter it, it's a little different. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I know I don't really like the expansions even. I just like to play Splendor. It's simple. I can't. They're they're expansions for the game. I'm not yeah, <laughs> they're whatever. Like. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I sometimes you just need something, something simple, a go-to thing. And mm -hmm. I have no shame about the fact that for me, that's Splendor. Sure. I, that was, um, went on a different journey than Seven Wonders. Like Seven Wonders kind of has kind of come back for me a little bit. Splendor, it's, yeah. I yeah. I mean, I routinely teach games to teenagers. Having three options on your turn, perfect, perfect. It's the right. perfect teaching game. Right, so Splendor. Um, bringing it back, Liz, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable how much we're matching up. My number 46, Seven Wonders Duel. Ooh, I've never played that. I really want to. Seven Wonders Duel is a step above for me, above Seven Wonders, not just for the two-player and how it improved the two-player, because Seven Wonders, regular two-player is, is a little janky, it's, you know, a bot player and kind of, you know, a little bit much. Um, Seven Wonders Duel is the two-player version. And, you know, it still has that Lost Cities vibe, but graduated. So if yeah. you like Lost Cities, it's, you know, a, a, a little bit more going on because it has the, the separate military track and it has a little bit of an economy. So you get a little bit of money in there. And but it has that same core thing of like, OK, there's a central um, a set of cards. And if I take that card, then I'm leaving that card from the play, for the other player. Or if I take that card, then this person can complete their science. Or, you know, if I take that card, then they can attack me with their military. So you got to, like, calculate that every single turn. And I think that's just it's so well done. And I find that it's like, if I play, if I um, take it after a year, it doesn't take me long to relearn the rules. That's for a, for a complex game, for a simple game. Yeah, you should, you should be able to like pick that up. Like a Splendor, they, you can play the game after two years and remember the rules. Seven Wonders, there's a, lot, there's a lot more going on, but I can still kind of, with a very little, you know, picking it back up, kind of remember how everything works. And that for me yeah. is really valuable. You know, for a, yes. a comp, for a, for a, a next step game to be able to, you know, to for me to remember stuff, and for just the, like excellent core gameplay and the, that core decision of you know take this card and leave that card and all, and all that kind of thing, operating your powers. Have not played any expansions. I don't need it. Uh, so, but I'd be happy to if, if they uh, flitted on my table. So yeah, we, we 
Liz, we're so simpatico. This is amazing. <laughs> but it won't last. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I think um, there's one game. Okay, not on this list, but the, uh, at the beginning of the second list, you're going to be mad. Uh, and I think... <laughs> <laughs> it's just a board game. We can't be mad. I might roll my eyes at you. It's true. Okay, okay. I make it. I'm gonna. And I'm gonna. I think the over under and people can track this in the comments. I'm gonna make Liz's eye roll twelve times throughout the <laughs> through, throughout the course of this list. I think I will. I will generate twelve eye rolls. All right. So we're currently at one. We're currently at one. Yes. One. I, All right. I, got, okay. I, I think I have one coming up in this section. We'll see. All right. Let's see. How many times do I think I'll upset you? I don't know. You're not very flappable. Mm. Um, there'll be a couple of things I'm a, I'm a love and a fighter, but you won't care, okay, I won't care. <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's go to number 45 all right so my number 45 made it on here because i don't pull it out all the time but i do pretty often and it's a solo design that i think is just the smartest uh and that is black sonata i okay. really just the concept of solo hidden movement is amazing to me. And so I can't play Black Sonata like a million times in a row, but I really like to get it out and play it like every so often. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, um, yeah. So for those of you who don't it's know Black Sonata- It's a unique game. There's nothing like it out there. No, there's truly nothing like solo it. Solo hidden movement, you know, track tracking the, the what, what are you tracking around the, the land? So this is also what I like about it. So it's like a literary game. It's got a literary theme. So the uh, the dark lady is a mysterious woman from Shakespeare's sonnets. And the idea of Black Sonata is that you're like going around getting clues to who she might be. And then you have to find her and confront her. But she's like moving around this map in ways that, you know, you don't necessarily know where she's going. You could get little hints and you have to like deduce where she's going to be and get yourself over there to meet her, which is wild. Mm. Um, but what I also like is that the clues that you're picking up. So it's a logic game, which I, I love just as a thing, but also the dark lady options in the game are people who could have been the dark lady and the clues are based on actual information about their lives. Mm. So I just find that really neat. What a cool concept, mm. really cool design, really unique theme. There's just nothing quite like it out there. And so I just love it for that. Never played it, but I, I need to take, I need to check it out. All right, so my number 45 is actually floating above me. I feel really bad because of the way my light is. You can't see it, but I'm going to try to <laughs> I don't know if you can tell which that one glare. That is. What is it? Uh, it is Hostage Negotiator. Ah, uh, so uh, yes. Host so, okay, so Hostage Negotiator is a very simple, again, solitaire card game. Look at that, Liz. We're, we're getting it together again. Um, Liz likes literary stuff. I like counseling. <laughs> <laughs> You are Hash Negotiator, which is adjacent to counseling. And you are, um, you have to like, you know, interact with all these bad guys. It's very movie like, you know, uh, all these bad guys are taking hostages. You have to kind of like, you know, talk to the hostage in different ways. A very simple card and dice game. The, the base set is, you know, a solid game, you know, like a seven out of 10. And it's, it's very random. So, like, there's a lot of people that don't do not like the randomness. I think that there's enough um, kind of tools in the box in there to overcome the randomness and, and you know, win. A little bit more often so I, I i like it uh it's one of those games there's a couple on this list where if it was just the game it wouldn't be here but they added the expansion for campaign a, a simple little campaign called career career it makes this game for me it is oh i love career uh ag Perfurio, mwah, what you did i reviewed on a dice tile go ahead and check out that review uh i really thought this that took it into that 8.5 seal of excellent territory for me uh now you can play 10 games and a story unfolds about your career. You're a rookie and you're getting hazed by people and you're meeting your friend who's like, you know, your recruit with you, but then the friend, you know, becomes like this person who is a antagonist towards you. And, you know, oh no, you you um, you um messed up your career. And now that, you know, you have to like make up your, your debt. You have a lot of debt now. So you have like the stressor. Uh, and so these, <laughs> these cards float in and out that kind of like just tell a story, very good emergent story. Uh, there's a there's a narrative it, it combines narrative telling and emergent telling so like it like there's a lot of um you can't this is like a narrative game that you're done like a lot of new things will happen as you play a new careers uh i i think this i think costume negotiator career is outstanding so please go ahead and check that out that uh have you i know you i know you because you did a how to solo i looked at the how to solo to um your video on your on beyond solitaire um I checked it out uh, from when I wanted to kind of re re learn the game again, because I always go to Beyond Solitaire whenever I want to learn anything. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. But I know you, I, I don't think you've played Career, right? I've played it, I just haven't done a tutorial for it. Okay. I didn't know how to do that without kind of ruining the joy of it. It's true. 
-hmm. that's that's the thing like i don't i don't really like to if it's a game that gives a lot away i think a lot before i do something with it Mm -hmm. so that was how she negotiated her career let's move on to number 44. All right, so my 44. What's the, what's the Roman numeral on that? Uh, Cause I'm gonna get it, I hope I'm hopefully I'm gonna get it right when I do it in the edits, but what's the Roman numeral? So that would be, so it's XL for 40, IV for four. XL, IV, okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're teaching the peoples. We're teaching the peoples, Liz. <laughs> Sam Perluti is all about education, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Watch me have like had some weird brain fart there. No, it's fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, so my number 44 is going to be Street Masters. It's okay. a game I really like. Uh, hold and on. Is it here? It's here right there. Look at that. Better people. be. <laughs> <laughs> so Street Masters is one of those games that I really, really loved right when I first started playing it. I still really like it. Uh, it's not that same like red hot fire that I felt before, but I still really, really enjoy it. And I like getting it out. Um, mm-hmm. Street Masters, for those of you who don't know, is like it's like Double Dragon plus Sentinels and Multiverse. And so, and it's tactical. So you have like these different decks of cards for your enemy and for you and for your environment. And also you have an environment to move around in and fight in. Um, It's really awesome for one or two players. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it at higher player counts, but you know, Jason and I actually talked about this game before. So you can actually check out our review but it's gonna be a couple of those people <laughs> be a couple of those. <laughs> but you know street masters is a game that i just think is enduringly good it's still my favorite of the modular deck system i know you do not prefer street masters you have another love um but uh you know it's it's solid it's good i i will not get rid of it at least not right now i still really like it so there it is and another app game if you want to check it out on the app there's oh. an app available on the on the, on ios but for tablets I have not played that yet, and I might really like that. Yeah, no, I, it's 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 really solid one, and I think I I prefer the app because there's so much tracking. Like I yeah. generally don't prefer apps unless it's like gives me that that you know, two minutes and out kind of type feeling. But if there's <laughs> a lot of tracking, then you know I might have to kind of lean on an app a little bit. Street Match is definitely one of those games, uh, but it's good. I like Street Matters. It's still here. I I don't have bad game or p- games that I don't think are good. They're not here. <laughs> 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 I like like Liz. We have too many games, and we just we we've been culling, culling, culling. So I'm very happy with the state of my collection now. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, these next two games are relaxation games. Uh, I'm a mental health therapist. Uh, these are games that I would like to put eventually in my games for a healthy mind series uh, on the dice tower. So like games that I think are good for mental health for some reason or another. Not just like overall relaxing. I think there's games that do a lot more. For your mental health, but these two particular games, that's what I get out of them are a very sense, strong sense of relaxation. So um, number 44 is Parks. So Parks is a game, I think it's for one to five, about walking in the woods. And there's a very light kind of resource management type thing as you go on to different uh, places, you get these re- icons like sun or water, and you can use the icons to kind of purchase power-ups or you know one-time things or whatever. So there's a, there's a resource aspect to it which kind of adds that gamer element but eh, you know i played solo and i traipsed through the woods and i traipsed through the woods economically and efficiently apparently (laughs) (laughs) Uh, because of the resource management but it's the the art is amazing the gameplay is easy and cool Uh, again and the one of those games where it is it offers me a little bit more than like a free sell or something like that but it's still i can pick it up very easily after a long time We have a lot of games, we go through a lot of games. So like being able to come back to a game is very valuable to me and Parks is one of those games. And it just, it's a really pleasurable game overall. I've not played the expansion Nightfall. I've not played the two player game Trails. Uh, (laughs) So, but it's, so there's a lot more in the system for me, waiting for me, but I'm happy with my uh, product that I have and that is Parks. Nice. I've not played Parks. I actually would really like to, Uh, but it's funny that your number 44 is a game about being relaxed in nature because my 43 is a game about suffering in nature because it's it's Robinson Crusoe. (laughs) We're either a simpatico or the complete opposite. It's amazing. (laughs) So so Robinson Crusoe, for those of you who don't know, is like a classic solo game for people who like to lose a lot. So get ready to have tigers eat you and lose the weather in interesting be ways. Like you, any game can make you lose, but like you, the the stories that stay with you when you lose in this game. I know it's like I really tried to build a shelter and like get it together, but then something ate my face, or like oh, but then I had so much bad weather that it just yep. destroyed everything that I had built, and then I died. You know, I had gangrene. <laughs> 
I, I didn't treat it the right way. That card went back in the deck and that gangrene just bit me in the butt. <laughs> yep. It was bad. <laughs> yep. So if you, if you want to have an experience that is full of despair, but also laughter, I guess I think that might accurately describe Robinson Crusoe. It's one of those games I really like to play it. Sometimes I just don't feel like it because it's so hard that it's like, do I really want to do this to myself right now? But when I'm in the mood, it's still so good. It's yeah. it's a classic for a reason. Right. I mean, no, it's, Robinson it's, Crusoe is where is that? It's it's here. Some oh, yep yep. It's a, it's up. It's off camera. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's a for those of you who have not played it, it is cooperative or solo. So I call it a solo game because most people play it solo that I encounter, but you can play it with other people if you want to share your sadness. I think it's one of those games that's like a, actually a solo game, but then they just divvy up roles. Yeah. So like the more plays you have, the less you have to do. It's like, uh, right, yeah, it's a solo game, uh, but there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> uh, so another relaxation game for me, uh, this is number 43. This is Sunset Over Water. This one is from Pencil like First one. Games, Eduardo Baraf. Uh, I, I think Steve Finn on the design, Keith Patik on the solo. Uh, just a, a lot of lovely people. That's why I wanted to mention their names. I really like these people. Uh, and they made a beautiful game. Oh, and Beth Sobel in the yard, another lovely person. Uh, and it is a, uh, a game where, you know, you're just kind of, you have a grid of 25 cards and the, and the 25 cards are always awesome and beautiful and lovely. You know, there's just um, different panoramas uh, around nature. And you have your little meatball and you're walking around the 25 grid and you're collecting sets. Uh, and, you know, the sets will, you're, I think like you're painting pictures is the motif. So like you go to different places, you collect the set, you cash in that set, and then, you know, you're on and then the, the, the board refills. In Solo, it's a, a very different, um, Keith really re-engineered for the Solo. And I like when games do that, where it's like, we're not, we're, don't just play this Solo and it's kind of a crappy experience. Let's really make this good. And, and so uh, Keith did this thing where it's like, you have a little bit more control about when the board refills, which is a really cool decision space. Should I go for this or should I refill the board? Or what? Um, but you're doing kind of the same core thing, which is just traveling around and just being in that space too, man. I love, I, I still play it. I mean, I still play Sunset Over Water, uh, you know, to this day, if I need to just relax and have a good time. Yeah, I actually agree. That's a very lovely chilled out game. Yeah. Yeah, I still have my copy as well. It's, um, it's that, that the is pencil a, first that's, game that's that was high praise. Keeper. That is high praise. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> you got, you've got rid of a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my number 42 is one that, um, so my passion for it ebbs and flows, but, um, I will never get rid of it ever. I have everything for it. You and I reviewed together and it going nowhere. That's flashpoint fire rescue. Yes. It's, it's just, it's a really solid game. It's so good. Like I'm I don't always... it right now. There it is. It's right up there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not always in the mood for it, but you know, it's a game that I will always be willing to play. And I pull it out myself, you know, at least a couple times a year, play some Flashpoint Fire Rescue. It's just, it's a really, really solid. Firefighting, experience. cooperative, rescuing yeah. people, pandemic style, but just very different in terms of, you know, um, it, it, you know, the disease cubes in pandemic are very abstract, you know, uh, but yeah. in fire and in, in Flashpoint Riot Rescue, you are, you are you have fire chips, which are you know they they're very vivid and they're evocative, and they do what they do what they, in terms of the explosions and hurting you and everything. And then there are the the people and the kittens and the doggies. <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta get the pets out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. She doesn't she doesn't care. She'll go all around the board. If there's a cat that like just packed peeks its head under a under an um a bed or something. Liz like, I don't care what strategy you guys are doing. I'm rescuing the cat right now. No, that's actually true. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get the cat because I, you know, I, I, am the I can't help bestie. but think of it as my cat. <laughs> I am the gaming bestie uh, and Liz is blessed to have uh, a person, uh, a significant other uh, that is a long-term relationship. If we're both drowning in a lake and there's a cat next to us drowning in a lake, I think we're doomed. I think we're doomed. <laughs> I think we're doomed. She's saving would... that cat. Swim, you'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so uh, number 42 is um, another, it, this is a game, so I can't play it solo, so I, I can't play it nearly as much as I want. But it's one of those games, I think, um, uh, I, I don't know what game you mentioned it for, but it's like, you know, someone comes over and it's like, uh, you know, what, what do I want to play? I'm like, let's play this. Oh, do you want to play this? This is a good game. I, I like this, want to play it? It is Fantasy Realms. Uh, so Fantasy Realms is Gamer Rummy. Uh, and I recently reviewed Here's Red Rising, 
uh, right over there, which Red Rising is basically the Euro version of Fantasy Realms. But playing Red Rising made me realize Fantasy Realms are really good. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, and, you know, so like I said, if we're for a game of Rummy, you're kind of making sets, you know, draw and discard, draw and discard, draw and discard, craft your hand into the highest scoring hand possible. Uh, and the combos are really cool. You can you can shoot a moon and score like 500 points, which is an amazing number. Or you might be stuck there with 120 because <laughs> you didn't get your combo uh, set up or anything. It's a really cool game. It doesn't take that long to play. Uh, it's three to six, I think, uh, with a variant for two. And it's a higher player count game. It takes 15 minutes to play. I, uh, you know, it's a dumb name. I mean, oh come on, please, can we like at least invent the world or something? You know, uh, realms of Ugamore or something. I, ah, fantasy realm. It, it does not stick out in anybody's mind whatsoever. But I really like that game. Uh, so yeah, fa uh, fantasy realm. I can't say that name enough, even though the name is kind of crappy. <laughs> Don't tell that to Star Realms or Hero Realms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? Like, why do I not? Why do I think those names are better than fantasy realms? Because fantasy is so generic. <laughs> no, that's true. I, guess, I mean, Star Realms has a good because it has the same like rhythm as Star Wars or something like that. You know, Star Trek, right? Yeah, Star it's realms. very declarative. It's nice to yeah, say, exactly. Yeah, but yeah. fantasy realms. Yeah, I don't know what that is. That could be, it I don't could know, be like a knockoff Dragon Lance. That could be like. Yeah. <laughs> 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 some supplement from the 70s <laughs> with a lot of appendices <laughs> um where am i gonna find this bit of information oh fantasy realms part five yeah <laughs> oh no <laughs> all right so that was my number 42 liz number 41 x l i yes right all right so yeah all right so this game i have okay I love this game, Odi at Amo. I, I hate and I love. I, I absolutely adore this game. It's a pain in the butt to play. Did you just seek some more Latin on me? Are, are we giving more people uh, more of a Latin education there? Yes, uh, because this is a Roman game. It's uh, Falling Sky, the Gallic Revolt Against Caesar. I really I was waiting game. for this, but we're going to get a few of these people. We're going to get a few of these. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Jason equivalent of an eye roll. Um, okay. Yes, yeah. This is like, okay, here we go. Go ahead, Liz. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, so Falling Sky is a coin game, and the coin system basically stands for counterinsurgency. And so you have different versions of coin and different eras of time and in different locations. Uh, originally, it was meant to model like modern conflicts where you had like an authoritarian power and then guerrilla warfare coming back at it in different factions so falling sky is basically if you want a lot of research was done into the gauls maybe not your game but if you want to look at julius caesar's the gallic wars the board game it's amazing because it really really closely follows julius caesar's comments on his war and so, you know, if you are really into Julius Caesar and you want to kind of connect with um, his work, which I really do, you know, I've taught AP Latin a few times <laughs> and all those sorts of things. Uh, Falling Sky is just a really interesting game to play. And it's a coin. It's kind of my coin representative on this list. Um, so I actually really do recommend it as a game. It's a good time if you, well, okay. It's a good time if you're willing to suffer a little bit learning the game. <laughs> like any coin. Yeah, like any coin. Coins are not something that you just go buy and you expect to play it the night of. It's got like two rule books and it's a pain in the butt. And then once you learn how to play it, it's good. So <laughs> that's uh, it's it's one of my like masochism choices. I really enjoy it now that I know how to play it, but learning how to play it was unfun. So that's what I'll say. But uh, my number one. Go ahead and watch the video on Beyond Solitaire, which will really, really help you out in terms of uh, peer, but opening up this tome. You know what? I need to. I need to make a coin series. I've been meaning to do it forever and then COVID happened and I had to teach during it. But you know what? That is a project that needs to happen. All right. Got to do it. Cool. Uh, so this one, uh, no, no relation whatsoever to the last one. Um, but uh, my number 41 is a game that Liz and I are probably going to review at some point together. We both like it. Uh, it is right here on my shelf. It is Everdell. Uh, Everdell from Starling Games. Uh, it is the... Um, very like woodland creature not like I, I, I people are getting the sense of like i like these relaxing games uh and i like you know games that evoke nature so um it is a but it's not like you know a, a, a truly like kind of breezy game it's a pretty involved like you know card combo build your tableau um you know but i like when you build your tableau with like i don't know the the the, the, the postal pigeon 
and uh the, what is it the, the twig barge that has the frog on it and all oh. these little like woodland <laughs> things that are happening uh and it, but it's like a basic card combo race for the galaxy esh game where you're kind of you know you have to uh things combo off each other so like if you get this it'll trigger this and if you get this it'll trigger this and you know working that combo through has is excellent uh there have been kind of um the solo is good you know i don't know if the solo is like a draw here but it's enables me to play a very very good game so i'll, I'll take it and i think there have been some different stabs at a different uh different solo box so you know kind of um uh a lot there so yeah no everdell is just solid all around and i like the expansions like i mean there's a bunch of expansions at this point uh three and then two more coming so i, I have two uh the second the last two that are coming and i just think it's a, a nice little product yeah, I mean, I can't help my attraction to Everdell just because I loved Redwall in those books when I was a kid. Right. So if you liked Redwall, like cute little animals living in an abbey together books, then Everdell will evoke that for you. And th that's a, just a really strong nostalgia pull for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But also, Jason, who would have thought you loved nature? When I look at you, all I can think of is like diesel oil and... City. <laughs> <laughs> New York. Concrete jungle where dreams Angry. are made of. Oh, sorry. Angry pigeons. <laughs> Dubious hot dogs. <laughs> Wish fulfillment. <laughs> I've been trapped in the, the steel, the concrete jungle long enough. I need to be out. Free me. <laughs> balance, it, balance, Liz. Balance is the key to a healthy mind. That I'll, I'll take your professional advice on that. <laughs> Absolutely. So that was our uh, 50 through 41 for our top 50 50. We are very excited to keep going. Uh, so until next time, uh, this is Jason from Self Stories and. Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire. And we are going to remind you to Semper Ludimus. Always play. What is up? My name is Melissa McKeck, and I'm coming at you with a top 10 list. So this is my top 10 board games that I think video gamers would like. I try to keep in mind as though uh, you're trying to show a video gamer the wonderful world of board gaming. And I really, the way I ranked it was in terms of how much I like the board game in relation to my taste in video games. Hopefully that makes sense. But anyway, the, the ranking doesn't quite matter because you know your uh, group or friend or whatever better than I do, obviously. So I'm just gonna get right into it with my number 10 being Chronicles of Crime. So Chronicles of Crime I think is really cool because it has that app integration built in. So uh, this might blow video gamers' minds thinking like, oh, I didn't realize that board games could do that and like use technology as well. Um, and this is really for people who like the uh, solving of mysteries in video games and working out puzzles uh, and all that sort of jazz. And I like that kind of stuff too. So I, I really like Chronicles of Crime, and it's also cooperative, so that could be something that's cool for uh, some video gamers as well. My number nine is specifically for uh, gamer, video gamers who like the, I guess, dexterity nature of video games, and I'm talking about Ice Cool. So Ice Cool is all about hand-eye coordination, right, like in video games. I think Ice Cool is great because you're flicking around penguins and you're trying to get fish while the lame hall monitor is trying to find you and stop you from having fun. And it is uh, something that you can get better and better at. You can do jump tricks and all that sort of stuff, spinning and whatnot. So this is really good, I think, for people who like um, like side scrollers or things like, you know, Cuphead, you know, Nintendo games, uh, where it's all about like getting that jump or just avoiding um, monsters and things like that. So that's my number nine, Ice Cool. My number eight game is Dead of Winter. So I think that this is really cool for video gamers that are into, you know, the zombie genre and, uh, you know, trying to protect their colony or whatever. There's certain games that are like that, survival sort of games, um, sometimes where you're actually working together or maybe it's just a story, a solo story-based mode video game. Um, with zombies in it, but this Dead of Winter adds a twist where there's a traitor amongst you, right? Which can add to the story of the board game itself. Now, I would introduce this to somebody who is uh, willing to learn uh, a little bit more complicated of a board game, um, who's new to gaming. So uh, I think this is really cool. This one, it, it, you know, you're, you have your own little objective that you have to complete uh, in order to like 
fulfill your whatever <laughs> happiness, I guess, uh, while also maintaining the colony. But one of you uh, are might be um, trying to ruin all of that for everybody. And I don't really know why I forget. But anyway, so that one is cool. My number eight, Dead of Winter. My number seven is for those video gamers who are super into the like fast paced uh, style gaming, right? So those who, who like the, the tension and the pressure and I'm talking about Fuse. Fuse is a really cool game. It's a cooperative again where you're chucking dice and you're trying to fulfill objectives as fast as possible while this timer is ticking down and then uh, you're trying to essentially defuse this bomb. It is very hard to win, uh, and this one might also be really cool if they're not familiar with like cooperative uh, board games, um, and especially ones that are like timed like that, that have that adrenaline pumping action in it. Uh, so that is my number seven, Fuse. My number six also has that where it's like um, adrenaline pumping, uh, real time strategy sort of stuff. Uh, maybe people who like Overcooked uh, or Overcooked 2 would really like this game. I'm talking about Kitchen Rush. So Kitchen Rush, again, like I said, it's a cooperative style game where you're trying to run a restaurant with everybody and there's timers. And you're trying to uh, get the recipes and uh, get the food that you need, order, uh, get the orders ready and everything. Uh, you only have four rounds to do it. This one is another very difficult game to beat. Again, I would introduce this to someone who is willing to learn a little bit more of a complicated game. Um, I did do a Teach the Teach on this where I think it, it helps to uh, figure out how to like teach this to someone a little bit easier. So uh, that's my number six, Kitchen Rush. My number five is for those video gamers who are all about the story of the game. Um, and that's really what they're there, they're for, they're there for like to just be along this ride. Um, and I'm talking about Forgotten Waters. Forgotten Waters is a pirate themed game, again, cooperative, and it's all about the story. Yes, there is real time stuff going on, which is cool for, I think, video gamers, uh, especially. And uh, it's got a little bit of worker placement, so you'll kind of show them a little bit of like what worker placement looks like. But the the theme and the story is just like dripping from it. Uh, and I think that is really cool. Again, it uses app integration, which I think could blow uh, some video gamers minds. So that is my number six, Forgotten Waters. My number four is for those who like team versus team games. I'm thinking like MOBAs, which stands for Massive Online Battle Arena or something like that. Um, Multiplayer online battle arena. I think that's what it's called, right? So things like League of Legends or Dota, things like that, um, where you each have your own sort of role and special abilities and everything. So Captain Sonar does that uh, really well, where you are uh, in a submarine. And again, it's that real time strategy uh, sort of game, uh, which again, I think is good for video gamers. But you have your own role and your own like abilities that you can do and communication is key. So I think that, you know, video gamers who love those types of games or something like Rocket League and things like that, they would really like Captain Sonar, my number four. My number three are for those who are fans of sandbox style games. Now, uh, I, I, I put on the list, two really but I, i'm leaning towards western legends because it's a little bit easier um and, and i think a lot of people like the like western theme and everything so people who play like red dead online or red dead redemption things like that where it's like open world you could kind of do what you want western legends has that right where you can uh be an outlaw you could be uh somebody who's lawful you could uh you know rattle cattle and all that sort of stuff so you could kind of do whatever you want in this game i find it a little bit limiting based on like map size where it doesn't quite feel like sandbox so if you have a video gamer who is super down to learn a more complicated game i would recommend zaya legends of the drift system with the Ember, uh, Embers of a Forsaken Star expansion. That is an essential expansion, I think, to the game. But if they are really willing and you think that they can handle it, totally go for it because if they like Sandbox, I think Zaya will surprise them to show them like, hey, yeah, uh, board games can also have a Sandbox feel to them as well. So that's my number three, Western Legends, or if you wanna go a little bit more complicated, Zaya Legends of a Drift System. 
My number two game is again for those who like the story, but they want to be a more active participant in that story. They're not just there for the story. They're there for like the strategy or whatever it might be. And so mine is Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth. Uh, so this is great for those who love uh, Lord of the Rings, the IP in general. Uh, but for those video gamers who like story, who like having um, their choices matter in the game, um, this is a really fun one, it's a good one, and it's actually pretty simple to learn, I think, because there's not a whole lot going on. And again, with the app integration, I think will be a really cool thing for video gamers. And then my number one choice is for those who love survival games, exploration, you're trying to survive, and uh, there's some sort of objective to be had. And I'm talking about Seventh Continent. Seventh Continent, when I first played this game, I, I felt like I was playing one of those open world video games where I could spend hours in it. And I have spent hours in Seventh Continent, although the game recommends that you only play for like two hours at a time. Um, and it's actually helpful for you because then you get more food and everything. But anyway, aside from that, I think this would be an awesome pick for uh, video gamers. It's a little complicated, but not too bad, especially if you're the one running it and you could kind of handle all the like um, little rules uh, that need to be known because essentially the, all they have to know is like, yep, you could play this card if you have these resources, blah, 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 you know, it, and like the push your luck mechanism um, and all this other stuff. So if they like crafting um, and survival and everything in, in open world style video games, I would definitely recommend Seventh Continent, my number one. Anyway, that is it for this top 10 list. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your summer spectacular and I will catch you next time. Have a good one. What are you all mind. still doing here? Huh. 30 minutes from now, Mike is going to be teaching this game. Are you teaching this one? Well, we all three, thankfully, have played it, so we're going to do a team teach. Myself, Chris, and Z. Well, there you go. I'm actually in the middle of a game of Wonderland's War. We're playing that tomorrow. Um, and I'm the Queen of Hearts, and I'm getting my head chopped off. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. vicious, vicious players. All right. Well, we'll see you back in... 28 minutes at 2 o'clock. Stick around. It'll be fun. Woo!